marrying the Son of God is the symbol of the church. It is also the symbol of a spiritual development. To marry something is to mean to commit, is to give on a constant basis. It's not something that you just get married and then you you have nothing else to do. It is a commitment from the very beginning of that particular coming together to the end. That's what this is inviting us to do in a way, that we are to marry the church. The church is our spouse. We have been brought to the wedding feast through the very sacrament of the baptism. The minute you are brought in that door as a baptized Christian of Christ, you are married to the church. It's not just a simple coming in and getting and going through the formula. There is a whole lot involved. And that is actually opened up to us at the infant baptism. Most of you have brought your children for baptism. Most of you have brought them into the church for baptism. And when you do so, the first thing is asked of you, do you realize? And they use the word, do you realize what you are taking on in the teachings of the church and keeping her commandments and bringing up this child within those teachings of the church. And then they turn to the, to the godparents and they ask the godparents, are you ready to help these parents with the bringing up of this child? in the tenets of the faith. Most people, when they come for baptism, I'm afraid, do not understand. They come in the door, they say, yes, I hope, to the, to the questions asked, and then they go through the baptism, and then they, they go out, and they don't really understand what's the responsibility they have taken on. Some people think, well, just baptism is baptism. That's it. It's just something that I have to do. But it's not. Baptism is only the beginning. Baptism is only the first step to making that understanding of being a bound to Christ. Our spiritual lives are dependent upon that understanding. We don't understand it most of the time because we haven't learned it. It's not something that is given to you automatically. I wish it was. We have a great world. That every person who walks into the church door would understand directly and immediately what they are going into and where they are going. But they don't. They're unable, seemingly, to understand it. Now, why is that? What is blocking us from understanding that concept? The concept of being in unity with Jesus Christ. For some, it's easy. Some have a good concept. For others, it seems to be a little harder. Either it is due to something that is blocking them or something that causes them to be inoculated against it, was the way I'd use it. We don't like to hear that we are not in full union with Christ. We don't want to hear it because it is something that is hard to hear. Well, of course, we can change that. That's the beauty of it. We can come and learn more about your faith. It doesn't just stop once you're baptized or when you finish CCD. When we come into church, most of us come to church every Sunday. And we do a great thing. We love it. 
It's fellowship. It's coming together as a group of people who think like-mindedly. That's nice. That is nice, by the way. It's nice to be able to sit and talk to someone who you can relate to, even if it is. Whether it is politics or whether it is religion, it is something to be able to sit and talk together. But that's not the only issue about it. We need to go deeper. If we want to move on in our spiritual life, we have to take different, a different approach. I've spoken about it several times. We need to be enveloped in the church's teachings. Not just by coming in and coming to Mass. Although that is good, by the way. I'm very happy to see people coming to Mass. It seems to be getting smaller and smaller as this generation begins to pass away. And I hope that it doesn't stop there. I hope it grows. But a lot of the time it doesn't grow because we haven't actually fostered it or we haven't actually given it any great help. We have done the duty, yes, but we haven't moved beyond the duty. Thomas Merton tells us that when we come to Mass, the idea of listening to the Word of God, we are hearers of the Word of God. We're not just hearers of it, though. In order for us to hear the Word of God, we have to begin to understand that Word of God. What does it say to me? How am I engaged in that Word? How does that Word affect me in my life? How do I prepare myself to come to Mass? How do I go about preparing myself even to be a Christian in this world? It's not just as simple as, as we think sometimes. It's a struggling thing. Many of us who are faithful struggle daily to do what is right. And that's something we all do. There's nobody here who will tell me that they have a marriage that doesn't take work. If someone comes up to me and tells me that they have got a marriage, oh, complete bliss all their lives, I'd say, well, you know, you've got to give me some of that because uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really rare, rare thing to see. There is a communication. There is a sense of being together. And that being together comes across a lot of little bits and pieces that, you know, Oh, I wish to change about the husband, or the husband wish to change about the wife. But they have to live together. They have to communicate. They have to understand each other. Otherwise, they wouldn't be married for 50 and 60 and 70 years. Otherwise, they wouldn't stay together. The idea of commitment, the idea of sacrifice, the idea of of understanding one another. You take any one of those pieces out of the puzzle and the whole thing falls apart. And the same thing happens to your spiritual life. You have to be engaged in it for it to mean something to you. This Gospel today has two segments in it. The first segment is the judgment. And a harsh judgment it is. If you listen to the gospel, if you are not willing to come to the feast of God, he's going to do he's going to disown you. He's going to destroy you, just as he did with the rest of the uh, of the people in this gospel. Destroy and burn their cities. And then he goes out and brings in the lowest of the low, the bad and the good alike. And even then, there's one in it that he takes out and puts outside. 
where there's wheeling and grinding of teeth. We have to open ourselves up to God's thinking. And the only way we can do that, of course, is to actually learn our faith. Take the time to read the scriptures. I had a wonderful occasion yesterday. I got the opportunity to talk to a load of college students on the understanding of vocation of life and what that vocation means to me. I suppose for the second time in my life I was asked, what does a vocation mean? What is the priesthood? The priesthood is in falling in love with God and falling in love with the people to which God has given me to embrace. And the only way that I can do that is to bring to them the two sacraments which are the most common of all. The Eucharist, first and foremost, the presence of Christ. The second has to do with forgiveness and understanding. The sacrament of reconciliation. I love those two sacraments. So much so that it pains me when I don't see it done right. I am very protective of it. Why? Maybe because my understanding has grown since I was a boy. And I love to be able to talk about the Mass. I love to be able to talk about the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Why? Because it imparts something more than what they are. We have been invited to the wedding feast. This is the wedding feast, by the way. This is the understanding of God himself made present to you on the altar. This is the wedding feast. This is part of that marriage between you and the Son. And by the way, baptism is just the beginning. Hearing the word is only the start. But to marry the Son of God is difficult. And so today let us pray that we may be able to do that. That we may have in our hearts that understanding of God's love constantly before us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.